Okay, guys, let's do the three-phase neutral current calculation, number one. Uh, in this example, you have uh, a Y secondary feeding three separate loads here, one at 30 amps, the second is feeding a load that requires 30 amps, and the third is feeding a load that requires 30 amps as well. Now, normally on a, a Y circuit, if each one of those phases um, is balanced, meaning that each of them has the exact same current that's being drawn, then the neutral current, which carries the unbalanced load, would obviously be zero. So we're going to mathematically prove that here. So what we've done is we've put the angles at which each of those currents vectors are happening. So the first vector we have happening at zero degrees, right? So that's our A phase, and that is at 30 amps. We have the second current happening here at 120 degrees. And again, the magnitude is 30 amps. And the third vector is happening at 240 degrees, and its magnitude is 30 amps. Okay, so each of these guys is 120 degrees out of phase for each of our three phases. If we look at where we're going to end up, well, if we draw in the x and y axis and we draw in those three vectors, if we start here with vector A at zero degrees, then we draw in vector B at 120 degrees, and vector C at 240 degrees, well, we end up at the exact same point at which we started. So there is no difference in potential between those two points. And so the current on the neutral will end up being zero. Now, each of these three vectors here, the one on A, B, and C, they're happening on different planes. This one's happening on zero degrees. This one's happening at a completely different angle. And this vector is going off at 240 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to break these guys down into their X and Y components, the things that they actually share. So if we draw in the X and Y axes here, then they have coordinates that are shared between the x-axis and the y-axis. Now let's start with vector A here. Just draw in A, B, and C. So let's start with A here. A is sitting right on the x-axis. So all of that current should be here on the x-axis. And the equation for the x component is cos of the angle times the hypotenuse. Okay, the, re the way that, or where that comes from, is if we have the cos, that's supposed to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? The adjacent is the x component. So in order to find the x component, we're going to do cos of the angle times the hypotenuse. If we are looking for the y component, well, the y component is the same as the opposite. And sine has both opposite and the hypotenuse within the same Ohm's law triangle circle here. So if we're looking for the y component, it'll be sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. Okay, so for this guy, we'll do cos of zero times 30 amps, and here we'll do the sine of zero times 30 amps. This ends up giving, giving us zero because there is no opposite here. It's all sitting on the adjacent. And here, this will give us 30 amps, all on the x-axis. Okay. This value is positive because it's on the right-hand side of the x-axis. Okay, if we continue on here, the x component of B is equal to the cos of 120 degrees times 30 amps. Okay, and that cos of 120 times 30 ends up giving us negative 15. If we're looking at this vector right here for B, we're trying to find the y-axis and the x-axis that make up this right angle triangle. 
because this line right here is on the left-hand side of the y-axis, that means that it will be a negative value. The y component here is above the x-axis, so the y component should be a positive value. So if we find the y component for b, it should be the sine of 120 degrees times 30 amps. And that ends up giving you positive 25.98. If we look at the third vector here for C, you can see that it has both an X component and a Y component. The X component should be negative, and because the Y component is below the X axis, this should be negative as well. This value and this value are a mirror image of each other, so they should be the same. This value is shared between this vector for B and this vector for C. So let's figure this out. If we look for the X component for C, it is the cos of 240 times our hypotenuse of 30 amps. Gives us an X component of negative 15. So that matches with what we thought. It was going to be a negative value. And if we look at the Y component for C, that is the cos, uh, sorry, not the cos, the sine So the sine of that same angle at 240 degrees, and we're going to multiply that by our hypotenuse at 30 amps, and that value ends up giving us a negative value, and it should be exactly the same as this because it is a mirror image of that value because both hypotenuse values are at 30 amps. Okay. At that point, what we're going to do in this chart is we're going to add them up. Okay, so we've got 25.98 positive minus 25.98 gives us nothing. Here we have positive 30 minus 15 minus 15 gives us nothing. Going back this way, we usually use Pythagoras. But here we can see that there's no x component, there's no y component, so our neutral current is nothing. And this has no angle whatsoever because there is no current. So we've now shown mathematically that if you have a balanced load where you have 30 amps and 30 amps and 30 amps on the A, B, and C, these three currents are balanced. And when we add the vectors, we end up at the exact same point at which we started and the neutral current is zero amps. All right, guys, uh, you can start the next uh, video, the three-phase neutral calculation number two, uh, where it has 15 amps, 20 amps, and 25 amps off of a Y circuit. Uh, so start that one up, and we'll compare notes.